What's up, folks? Carolina Jackpot checking back in. Part number two of week number two, our picks and predictions. Part number one ran a little bit long, partly because I'm picking so many more games this week. Let's see what we can find interesting uh, in amongst the games that uh, mean a little bit more that are occurring this Saturday. Uh, week two is always kind of tough. A lot of ho-hum games in college football normally on week two. Not that many great ones this year. No exception. There are a few good ones on Saturday evening. Let's get right into it. <clears throat> this game, Marshall at NC State. You know, I, I want to take Marshall for the over on that one. I really do want to take them to cover the spread against NC State, but I just, I, I just can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Looking back at their results from last season and just looking back, looking at their game last week, they, uh, they gave up a ton of yards and uh, they were somehow able to uh, pull out a victory. Miami of Ohio, I just don't, I just don't see it. They have a lot of points last year. Uh, they should be better than what they were last year, but uh, if you straight, I looked at their, uh, uh, I feel like they uh, they put up some good numbers last week uh, against my Gamecocks. Uh, they really did. Um, if you looked at that stat line and didn't know the final score of the game, you'd probably think that they won. Uh, kind of like the Marshall-Miami-Ohio game. However, it didn't turn out that way. I do think North Carolina is going to cover the spread in this one. Uh, I don't think Marshall uh, has the uh, strength to match up with North Carolina's tape along the lines of scrimmage, and uh, that's why I ultimately just decided to pick NC State to go on ahead and cover the spread here. Marshall's kind of disappointed me. Uh, what's it been? Uh, almost 20 years now that they've been a, a FBS team. And I thought that, you know, by this point in time, that they would be, you know, have found a, a spot in uh, one of your bigger conferences. Hell, maybe be a Power 5 school. You know, there's two two schools in West Virginia. The Marshall's a pretty good-sized institution. Uh, but just not, uh, it just hasn't happened. They uh, haven't, uh, haven't produced wins on the field like I thought they would. You know, they've been to a few mediocre bowls here and there, had a few mediocre years. But really, they haven't been. Uh, they haven't been really good since the uh, Randy Moss days, Chad Pennington days, and uh, what's that quarterback that got hurt? That Leftwich, the one that got got hurt, and his teammates carried him down the field. Forget that. Uh, that was really the last time that they've been anything uh, above or uh, slightly. Higher than mediocre. So we'll take NC State to take the over in that one. Ah, now let's get into the ones that uh, that I have something to stake at. South Carolina is at Missouri. Missouri right now is currently a 2.5 point favorite in that game. I don't want to do this, and it pains me to do so, but I'm going to take Missouri to cover the spread in that game. I'm going to tell you why. The past two years... We have opened up uh, with big wins. Uh, last year, we actually opened up with a win on the road against Vanderbilt where we covered the spread. Uh, they were actually favored in that game by four points. We covered the spread and beat them. The uh, next week, we went out and crapped the bed at Mississippi State. I don't really know if you can call it crapping the bed. We weren't uh, favored to win that game, but still, it was a piss poor performance uh, at Mississippi State let down. Two years ago, uh, we won a game uh, in Charlotte against North Carolina, who uh, went on to play in the ACC championship game that year. We were their uh, only regular season loss. Uh, it came, it came, the game ended up it, it, something like this one. It was, it was a goal line stand uh, inside the 10 yard line with a uh, not that long left on the clock. We actually there uh, had more at stake because we would, had in North Carolina scored uh, in that game. We would have lost. Uh, but we intercepted them in the end zone and hold on to win by four points. I don't think that one was within. I think we were down to about a minute left in that one when that happened. It wasn't inside, you know, 10 seconds like this one was. Uh, but they ended up quite the same. 
Next week, we're at home against Kentucky, a team we were favored to beat. Crap the bed. Lost. 26-22 to uh, Kentucky and gave them their first road win in the SEC since 2009. Six years they went without road wins. So, historically, after a big win, we suffered a letdown. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is defense. I want you to look at uh, how many yards Missouri put up last week. Now, granted, they did play uh, an FCS team, Missouri State. That couldn't stop a cold. Uh, but, I mean, our defense last week, they it was a bend but no break type thing. They put up a lot of yards uh, between the 20s. They, just, you know, they didn't get in the end zone. But uh, Missouri has a better offense than uh, NC State, uh, definitely. Last year's game in Columbia, we gave up 498 yards. Went back and looked it up. 498 yards to Missouri. Now, they did turn the ball over like three times. So, there's that. Uh, they're, one of their starting defensive linemen um, – is actually out for like six games. I don't know that that really makes a difference because there's not going to be much defense in this game. It's going to be a high scoring affair. But uh, I don't know. I, I just, for some reason, just knowing what I know, I look for us to disappoint. And sometimes in these type things, you got to kind of pick with your brain instead of your feelings. So that's why I'm going to take Missouri to cover the spread in this one. I hope they don't. I hope we win. And can we win? Yeah, obviously we can. If this game was being played in Columbia, South Carolina, I'd feel a whole lot better about it than I do knowing that it's being played in Columbia, Missouri. Um, we're just not that great of a road team. Uh, so there's that. I'm taking Missouri in that one. Don't kill the messenger. Just wait and see. All right. Auburn is at Clemson. Clemson's a five-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, as much as I hate to do this also, I'm going to pick them to cover the spread. You know, they're defending national champs. Uh, until somebody knocks them off, I mean, I, I, I'm just going to go on ahead and pick them. Five-and-a-half points. Uh, these teams, you know, I would think that on a neutral field, I would expect Clemson to win the game anyway. And five-and-a-half points, I think you yeah, I think you playing in Death Valley, you get more than five-and-a-half points. I mean, honestly, I think playing at Clemson is worth more than five and a half points. So that's why I picked them to cover the spread in this one. Uh, Auburn did have a pretty impressive victory on uh, Saturday, 41-7 with Georgia Southern. Had two guys go over 100 yards rushing. But Georgia Southern is not very good. Uh, I don't really know how much of a measuring stick that was. Uh, so... They, they're still pretty much up in the air. Stidham guy looked okay, but, you know, then again, like I say, it's Georgia Southern, uh, a not very good Georgia Southern team. It's not like the it's not like the Georgia Southern team that took uh, Georgia to overtime a couple of years ago. It's probably not even as good as the Georgia team or the Georgia Southern team that beat Florida uh, in 2013 when Muschamp was there. And it's definitely not as good as the uh, – Georgia Southern team that ran through Nick Saban's defense that time, like shipped through a tin horn. <laughs> so, I'm going to take the Tigers in that one, the Clemson Tigers, the defending national champions. I picked them to uh, cover the spread of five and a half points and win the game. At home against Auburn, uh, their pitcher and uh, road to possibly being in the playoffs sure took a uh, – a turn for the better on Saturday evening at the expense of Florida State. Uh, but lost that quarterback. He was a tough guy. Tough, tough guy. He took a lot of shots uh, over the past uh, season and two games, or season and one game. And uh, that's that's bad. Young man, young man might not even be able to play again. So it really sucks. Um, but they've got a – I think he's a true freshman that's taken over – or a red shirt, I'm not sure. He's two in red shirt freshman taking over at quarterback down there. They're going to possibly be in for, uh, you know, kind of a long year for them, unfortunately. Uh, but 
I mean, because, I mean, hell, everybody was expecting a close game with that Alabama one, me too, and uh, that turned into a blowout, even with Francois, who didn't get hurt till almost the end of the game. So, uh, Clemson's path to the playoffs just got that much easier. Damn it. <laughs> All right, uh, Oklahoma at Ohio State. Ohio State, seven and a half point favorites. I'll take them to cover this one. They blew Oklahoma out of the water last year, and the game was played in Norman. And I just think that this is, you know, going on the road at Ohio State for a brand new young head coach, that's kind of a daunting task, wouldn't you say? Oklahoma has, however, they do have the nation's longest winning streaks, like 11 games. They haven't lost since last year's game at home against Ohio State. However, the uh, competition that they've fa they faced in between those 11 games is an absolute joke. Uh, they did beat Auburn in a bowl game, but uh, I don't uh, I, I, I don't like Oklahoma. I don't think that Baker Mayfield's that good. And Ohio State really flexed some muscles last week in the uh, end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter there against Indiana. Uh, kind of woke up <laughs> at the end of that game, and they really blew them out of a very close game. Ohio State, uh, I think that they're uh, they're actually for real. I found an offense, and uh, I look for them to win that game against Oklahoma and cover that uh, touchdown spread there. Uh, Georgia at Notre Dame. This is kind of an odd game. Uh, you, you don't see a SEC team very often going on the road to play uh, at Notre Dame. In fact, I can't remember the last time when one did. Uh, Georgia, however, travels up to South Bend Saturday night to take on the Irish. It was a four and a half point favorite right now. Uh, you know, I'm going to take Notre Dame. They are. It's a home game, and uh, honestly, last year they were four and eight, but they were not that bad. Of they were not a four and eight team. They were more like a seven and five team, or at least a six and six team, really. They lost several games, very close scores, very close. Home game against Virginia Tech, they lost. It was really close. Uh, you know, a couple other ones that could have gone either way. Uh, Georgia's known for shitting the bed, and I, I don't expect uh, any less to happen here. Um, plus, you have a true freshman making his first start on the road at Notre Dame. That's a pretty daunting task for Jake Fromm. Jacob Eason got hurt last week against App State. Well, they look good. I mean, they did dominate App State, but, you know, then again, it, it's, it's App State. I mean, you know, they should have. I mean, they, uh, they covered the spread against them. I was going to take Notre Dame. If the game was being played at Sanford Stadium, it may be a different story, but I uh, um, just don't think Georgia can get it done on the road there. Uh, that big matchup. And uh, Stanford's at USC. I'm going to go on ahead and take the Trojans in that one. To cover, I think they are uh, they're for real this year. Uh, Stanford, we really don't know a whole heck of a lot against them other than they can put up a lot of points against Rice. Now, their first game was uh, two weeks ago. They didn't play last week. They played in Australia two weeks ago almost now against Rice and blew them out like 70 to 7 or something crazy like that. I'm going to pick them in that guy or USC in that game to uh, cover the spread and take control of the big uh, Pac-12 South. Uh, a couple of other ones real quick. Utah is that BYU. Uh, Utah is a one-point favorite. I'm going to take them to cover that. BYU's looked horrible uh, the past two weeks, they uh, didn't look good their first week against Portland State. Last week, got blown out by LSU. Shut out, 27 to nothing. Utah likes to run the ball. Ran for 292 yards last week. Uh, of course, they did. Uh, play. It was against South Dakota or North Dakota or one of the Dakotas. Uh, but still, BYU. Oh, shit. I'm going to lose that game by more than one point. And uh, Houston is at Arizona. I look for Houston to cover the spread and win that game straight up. Arizona, not very good. Houston didn't play last week. Ripe and ready to go. 
That's what I got for week number two, guys. See y'all later. Go Gamecocks.